Anybody in supply check right now? Before? No? I'm good. Okay. Everyone is good? Okay. Thank you, guys. Hear me all right? All right, great. Uh, thank you all for being here. Good afternoon. Joseph Chacon, the Interim Chief of Police here for the Austin Police Department. Um, I'm going to be going through a lot of talking points here to uh, highlight, obviously, what happened this morning. Uh, this is one of the more significant incidents that we've ever happened, have, have ever had happen in our city. I think it's, it's good that we take the time to really uh, look at everything that's going on and what the steps forward are. So I'm going to start by kind of recapping the events that happened um, this morning. It happened today, Saturday, uh, June the 12th. Our first 911 call was received at 1.24 a.m. and were followed by multiple uh, 911 calls in which we had um, we have reports of shots being fired in the 400 block of East 6th Street, uh, very near the corner actually of 4th and Trinity. 
Um, there was a large crowd of people uh, that were there at that time. Um, this was Friday night uh, in our downtown entertainment district. Uh, it is always busy at that time. We are back to our normal size crowds that we were seeing before COVID hit. And uh, in addition, we have the ROT rally in town. Um, and I can tell you that we do not think that this incident is in any way related to the ROT rally. Okay, so I want to make that very clear. Um, as shots rang out, we had officers actually in that block. Um, and so as, they, as the shots uh, began to, to ring out, they immediately jumped into action and, uh, and responded. Let me talk first about uh, the victims. Um, so the number of victims has actually increased to 14. Um, we had an additional victim that, after I had given my initial press conference, um, self-transported for medical care and, uh, and is in stable condition and is not, it is not life-threatening injuries. Um, so we have two victims that remain in critical condition, um, and then we have 12 victims uh, that right now are in stable condition. Almost all of those victims are innocent bystanders. They are not involved in this uh, that to our knowledge at this point, and, uh, and I say almost all of them, and I'll talk about that here in just a moment. Uh, these are the ones we know about right now, and we're not even 12 hours into this investigation, so please understand everything that I tell you right now is preliminary. The information may change based on our investigation, but I think that when you have something of this magnitude happen, I need to be in front of the public early and often, uh, giving as much information as I can. I want to express our heartfelt commitment um, to the victims. Uh, in this case, we will seek justice. Uh, we're going to get the people responsible into custody. Um, I realize that when we have an incident of this magnitude that happens in our city, uh, even if you weren't there, if you're a citizen here, you feel it. And, um, and because of that, uh, as I said, it's important for me to get in front of this group, and I will continue in the coming days and weeks to keep you informed on how this case is progressing. The suspect uh, uh, information that I'm going to give out is uh, is pretty limited, but but uh, let me let me just let you know that uh, we have developed suspects in this case. There are two male suspects. Um, I'm not going to release any further information because the the investigation is very much ongoing and we are actively working to get them into custody. Um, I will say that I feel, I feel uh, that we are going to be successful in getting them into custody. So, um, so we are actively working on that part. This investigation involves multiple uh, local and federal agencies. Uh, the Austin Police Department is the lead agency in this. We're being assisted by Texas DPS, uh, as well as by the FBI, and our partners at the ATF because uh, gun, guns were involved in this. This does appear to be an isolated incident between two parties. So that's why I say that we, uh, most of the victims were, uh, were innocent bystanders, but we're still sorting out all of the victims to see what their involvement is in this case. We're reviewing multiple sources of video. Our officers have their body-worn cameras. We have uh, the public safety uh, halo camera system, which we've had for a number of years, which did capture parts of this incident. And of course, the local businesses themselves have security footage that we are reviewing uh, for evidence. In reviewing all of this video, it has become very clear to me that our officers were just amazing this morning in the actions that they took how quickly they took them, and, and the fact that I truly believe that they saved lives. We have 14 people that were shot, okay? And none of them to this point have lost their life. I'm extremely grateful for that, but I, I want to highlight that I truly believe it was our officers' quick actions um, that are largely responsible for that. As I said earlier, they were on scene within seconds and quickly identified several uh, shooting victims that were in distress. They began immediate life-saving measures. Uh, they carry on their persons uh, two things. Uh, an IFAC, which is an acronym for an individual first aid kit, and a tourniquet. And um, I've seen video already of them running to the victims within seconds, pulling out their tourniquets and beginning to apply tourniquets 
on gunshot uh, victims. Uh, they, they applied uh, those first aid kits, uh, uh, the things that are in there, and they were conducting CPR on some. Um, as EMS uh, made their way through the large crowds, officers did not want to delay care, and they actually began uh, carrying victims from the immediate crime scene, and in some cases, they transported those victims in their police vehicles uh, so not to delay that care. It was clear as people were running out of that scene, our officers were running in. And I don't want that to be lost on people uh, because they are there to ensure the safety of our citizens and to provide that medical care that was, that was crucial in saving lives. Ultimately, our officers uh, transported six victims from the scene. EMS transported four victims and four victims uh, transported themselves for medical care. Uh, I stated earlier, I'll restate, those are preliminary numbers right now. They may change, uh, including going down if we find out that any of that information is, is uh, incorrect. I want to talk a little bit about safety downtown, okay? Um, it is one of our paramount um, things that we, um, that we put a lot of resources into, including our staffing. Um, last night I had five shifts of officers that were working when this happened. Uh, that is not unusual, and we staff them fully. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, hire, even if we have to hire overtime officers, to make sure that that happens. I have talked about the staffing shortages that we are uh, experiencing at the Austin Police Department. It is making it hard. I'll just tell you that. It's making it very hard for us to continue to staff at these levels, even if we offer overtime to our officers. Um, I, I stated that our crowds are back to the normal size, and we have the rock rally in town, so that's an additional number of people that we had here, and it was very, very crowded last night. I have reached out to our partners at Texas DPS. Uh, they will be supplying a number of uh, DPS troopers to assist with additional security this evening, and I will be evaluating the ongoing need uh, to request their continued assistance in the coming days. They have readily agreed to assist, and I want to thank Texas DPS. They have always been outstanding partners in providing uh, law enforcement and public, uh, public safety services. We encourage people who want to come downtown to enjoy our amazing city. Um, you know, we have these tragic events that happen, um, and, and they're horrible. Overall, we remain a safe city. And I think that people uh, should keep that in mind, but also keep in mind when you come downtown, you need to be safety conscious. Traveling groups, if, if possible, uh, be vigilant of your environment and your surroundings. And importantly, if you, have, if you plan to drink, have a plan to get home. I, I say that we're not even 12 hours into this investigation yet. There's still a lot of work to do. Uh, I want to ask the public to please contact us if they have information on this horrible crime. If you either witnessed this event or you have information that would be good for our investigators to know, I'm asking you to call one of two numbers. Either call directly to 911 so that you can provide it, or if you want to remain anonymous, you can call the Crime Stoppers tip line at 512-472-TIPS. You can remain anonymous if you call that tip line. If you have video from this incident, it's important that we get our hands on that video. Um, finally, I just want to assure the public, we're going to solve this case. And um, we're going to, we are not going to spare any resources, any time. We've called in all of our resources uh, this morning to begin working on it. They are, they are dedicated to getting this done, and we are actively working to get those responsible in the custody. I'll go ahead and take some questions. Taking into account how many people got shot, do we know how many shots were fired? We do not. That is something that is being investigated uh, based on the video evidence, based on the number of casings that we can recover, um, and then also taking into account it's a very chaotic scene. So um, that will be something that will be determined in the coming days. Do we know what originated? Was it a fight first and then the shots were fired? Based on our investigation, it appears that this is um, some type of a disturbance between two different parties. I don't have much more information that I can um, release at this point than that. I want to make sure I'm understanding. Are you saying or alluding to the fact that there could potentially be 
should we find out there were more than 14 victims that that number could change? Or I just want to say, you know, I said that we had 13 victims several hours ago, and now we're up to 14. There are people out there that might have been shot that have not sought uh, medical care yet or have not reported it to the police, and they may step forward. So um, those numbers are preliminary right now, and, and just like they changed from a few hours ago, they may change again. With staffing, you mentioned that you had five shifts, and that they were all fully staffed, if I'm not mistaken, but you said there are still staffing issues across the board just to get those. What, what staff requirements do you guys really have that are just going forward, especially after an incident like last night? So the tough thing for, uh, for staffing, and we've been talking about this for a while, is the number of vacancies. And, and uh, you know, the delay of our cadet class has uh, made those vacancies go up at a um, at pretty significant rate. And the start of our cadet class last week was, or this week, I guess still, uh, was, was very important to turn the tide on that and to, to, to change that. Uh, but it's going to take some time. And so uh, in the meantime, we've had to make some very tough uh, staffing reallocations and some some difficult decisions and we ask a lot of our officers in in, in giving their time off to come back in and work over time um, and right now uh, you know it's just like any other time it, it's it's tough to ask our officers that have already been asked so much of so um, I cannot highlight strongly enough you know that our officers step up every single day and and do the things that are necessary to keep this, this public uh, safe uh, they did it. They did it this morning, and they do it. Not these these cases, not on this kind of a scale. They happen almost every weekend. So um, we're going to keep on doing that. We're going to keep keeping the community safe. Well, after There's last night, in other parts of town uh, where you know calls weren't able to be answered for a while because everybody flocked to downtown. That's what we're examining right now. We uh, continue to um, base our staffing model uh, based on how quickly we can respond to our priority calls. And we are uh, slowing down because we have fewer officers for that. So that is an issue, and it's what we're working on. Chief Tacon, we're live with Univision. Can you say something in Spanish to our audience so they could hear what's going on? Sí, este, este incidente pasó en la mañana, 1, 24 en la mañana. Hoy uh, hay 14 víctimas de, de balazos uh, que uh, están en el hospital. Uh, nosotros estamos uh, haciendo la investigación uh, para agarrar a las personas que están responsables para este, este crimen y, uh, y los directivos están trabajando duro para hacer eso. ¿Cuántos sospechosos hay, Chief? Hay dos sospechos. Okay. Dos sospechos. Can you tell us about the tourniquet and life-saving measures training that officers get that they were able to apply last night? Certainly, um, you know, I, what I will do in the coming uh, hours and days is go ahead and provide one of my trainers uh, from our police academy. All of our uh, brand new officers in the academy uh, get the, uh, the tourniquet and IFAC uh, training, and then they are issued that equipment. Um, early this morning, uh, with everything that happened, all of our officers' equipment was exhausted. We used it all. And so we came back in. I had my, my personnel responsible for supplying that come back in uh, this morning and resupply our officers so they're ready to go for tonight. But that, that just goes to show, and, and I will have that person available uh, to, to be able to talk about exactly what that training looks like. What kind of charges can a suspect face when they're caught? That is going to depend on the nature of the injuries ultimate, ultimately. Um, you know, certainly we, we might be looking at everything from deadly conduct up to attempted murder. So um, all of that is being discussed with the DA's office, and we're working with uh, DA Garza's team on the appropriate charges. Were ambulances having a tough time getting downtown? Were ambulances having a tough time getting downtown? If so, is that just because of traffic, or do they have staffing shortages that you're aware of? I don't want to talk to the staffing of EMS. I'll let them do that. But I will tell you that uh, we had significant crowds uh, there last night or this morning, uh, which is not unusual for a Friday night in, uh, in downtown Austin. And uh, trying to make your way through crowds, especially crowds that are panicked, like this crowd was, can be difficult for the large um, EMS buses as they're trying to get down there. And so that's why our officers have kind of had to take some of the actions that they have. Chief, ¿Qué tan importante fueron las maneras de sus oficiales que salvaron vidas al meter a esas víctimas en sus unidades 
y llevarlas hacia el hospital. ¿Qué pasó, qué pasó en la mañana? Hoy es uh, un, uh, un pleito entre dos personas que, que pasó en la, en la calle 6 uh, y, uh, y uno o dos de las personas están uh, uh, tirando balazos a las, uh, al otro. Hay mucha gente que, que uh, tienen heridos de esos balazos. Uh, la mejor parte de esa gente uh, son inocentes, no estaban uh, metidos en, en el pleito. Uh, los oficiales que están allí, uh, inmediatamente uh, fue a ayudar a las personas que, que estaban heridos en veces uh, usaron su, sus vehículos para, para mover los, los víctimas del de la lugar del la incidente a la hospital. ¿Qué es lo importante sí. es haber... O, un momento, sí, un momento, sí, sí señor. Sí, sí. Había 14 heridos. Entonces, ¿usted cree que los que hicieron los disparos estaban buscando intencionalmente dar herir a tanta gente o es que había tanta gente que los disparos hirieron a mucho? ¿Qué cree usted de su experiencia? Yo no tengo información ahora que las personas que, que están uh, haciendo los, los balazos intencionalmente es, están uh, uh, con, lo, con los víctimas, no más entre los dos. Sí. Yes. What more can you tell us about the suspects and their whereabouts? Uh, we're working on that right now. There's not a lot more than I can offer right now. I think you just said that in Spanish, but... Um, just one more. Historically, we've seen mounted and bike patrol police on that part of 6th Street, but last night we have, didn't see that. So can, we, can you talk about some of the changes that we've seen in, in those uh, sections? Of the so th those units continue to exist. They just didn't happen to be in that area at that moment when this happened, um, but but they're still they're still a very much a part of the Austin Police Department. The victims... Would you say that the suspects had shot it? Were they aiming for those victims, or did they just get in the way of the gunfire? What can you tell us about that? I don't have any information right now that the victims were intentionally targeted. Um, it appears that they do appear to be innocent bystanders, um, but that you know that's still part of that ongoing investigation that we'll have to figure out. You had said um, you believe most of the victims were innocent bystanders, or all? So that is the part that we're that I'm just talking about, where I have I believe that most are innocent bystanders, but as we conduct those investi uh, the interviews with those the victims, we'll have to figure out what, what if any, involvement they might have had. And then you said two suspects, do you believe both were shooters? Uh, that is still under investigation right now. Yeah, I was, I was wondering if you think shots came from either side of those two groups, or if you're not able to say. That, I mean, right now I'm not able to say. Uh, can I ask, are there any safety protocols in place after we had the big South by Southwest, you know, driving into the crowd um, that might be in place after that that, that helped last night or that, you know? We have had um, the, the safety barricades in place for a number of years, um, uh, pretty much as far back as I can remember having worked here at the Austin Police Department. Uh, we block off uh, 6th Street on the weekends for a number of nights to ensure because of the large crowds and, and, and they end up in the street. We don't want vehicles coming through there. So uh, that was the case last night, this morning, and, um, and it will continue to be the case. I'll go ahead and take one more question. Okay, primero la video. Si tienes video, por favor, llama al 911 o hay un tip line de, de um, parada de, de crimen. Uh, y si llamas ese tip line, uh, usted puede, puede quedar anónimo. Um, para, para, no, para esta noche y en el futuro, vamos a, primero esta noche, uh, vamos a uh, hacer... Hacemos una pregunta a la, a la Texas DPS para, para ayuda y uh, van a ayudar en, en esta noche. Es posible también en, uh, en los días y también en las semanas en el futuro. Ok, thank you all very much. Thank you, Chief. Thank you.